Well, good morning, Irving Park Lutheran Church, to this wonderful Advent service of lessons and carols. I'm Pastor Rhonda Crawl. I'm uh, here with you today and welcome those who are here, there, online, and everywhere online throughout the world. Um, I am a retired uh, pastor who comes in and fills in when a pastor needs um, pulpit supply. And Pastor um, Bowman had called me yesterday and said that um, her son had tested positive to COVID. And they're all doing fine, but she thought it would be better to um, shelter a little bit until uh, a negative test comes in and he goes back to college. She will keep you posted uh, as to the Advent service on Wednesday. A little bit about myself. Um, I was a speech pathologist for 20 years, and then I got called into ministry. And I served at Gloria Day Lutheran in Downers Grove for about 13 years and have been retired now for two years. Uh, my husband and I live in Brookfield, and so uh, I uh, enjoy coming to different churches and being with you, um, giving God all the glory. So thank you for having me today. We continue with our lighting of the Advent wreath. Advent is a time for the human heart to wait while trusting God's eternal time. How long, Lord? How long? For those waiting for answered prayer. For, answered for those waiting in the face of uncertainty. For those waiting for justice and mercy to reign. For all of us waiting for God's kingdom to come. This morning, we light the first candle, which reminds us that throughout history, God's people have spent time waiting, wandering, and wondering about the timing of God's eternal plan. Like the people of old, we long for God's presence to illuminate the areas of life where we are called to wait. This morning, we echo the words of the psalmist, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Beloved in Christ, as we await the great festival of Christmas, let us prepare ourselves so that we may be shown its true meaning. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture how the prophets of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem the waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and hymns that the good purpose of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promise that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will bring all peoples and all things into the glory of God's eternal kingdom. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. But first let us pray for the world that God loves so much, for those who have not heard the good news of God, for those for whom love is a stranger, for those who walk in darkness and the shadow of death. And let us pray for the church in this place and everywhere, that it may be freed from all evil and fear and may in pure joy lift up the light of the love of God. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer to God in the name of Christ. Amen. At this time, we invite our children forward for a children's sermon. All right, I know this isn't normally the part of the service we do this, but all the young ones can come up here, young in body or spirit, if so called. All right, now we're going to gather over here this morning. So everybody come and, and wait over here just for a moment. Now you might notice that there is a whole bunch of new stuff in our sanctuary this morning. You see, we've got all this green hung up and red. And what does it look like? Christmas. Looks like Christmas because this is the first week of the season of, does anybody know what season it is? You can right here, front center stage. What? Yeah. Yeah? So what season? We've got all these different seasons. We've got Christmas. Does anyone know what comes before Christmas? Winter. Yes, that's true. Thanksgiving is also true. It's the season of Advent. Have we heard of the season of Advent before? Is that a word we've heard before? That's okay. Heard it today. That's great. So for the season of Advent, we have this here. Does anybody know what this is? An Advent wreath. So we're going to talk about the Advent wreath this morning because this is a tradition that has been in the church for a while. It was actually started by a Lutheran pastor. That was something I learned this week. I didn't realize that the Advent wreath is actually a Lutheran tradition from Germany. Now, what is the first thing we notice about the Advent wreath here? Yeah. It's a circle. Why might it be a circle? It is. Yes, this one's covered in green, but what does the circle mean? Has anyone ever talked to you about what the circle means in the church? The circle, yeah, go ahead. It, okay, it is kind of like a crown, yes. The circle is a symbol for God, because does a circle have a beginning? Does a circle have an end? No, and just like God has no beginning and no end, so too does the Advent wreath symbolize that, that nature of God, that there's, God has no beginning and no end. So that's the first thing. Now the other thing, as someone already pointed out, this one is really is a, is a plain gold, but what do we have on this? We do have fake evergreen, yes. Now, the thing is, there's something special about real evergreen and fake evergreen, too. And I'll give you a hint. It's in the name. What does evergreen mean? It's green, like in summer, winter, it's like all the seeds. 
You got it. It's always green. That's why it's called evergreen. And why might, if we've already talked about that God has no beginning and no end, why might green, evergreen, also be wrapped around it? Yes, exactly. Perfect. You nailed it. I couldn't have said it better myself. Because we never die, just like evergreen never dies, that is on the Advent wreath. Now, what is the other thing that is probably most noticeable about the Advent wreath? What's on it? Candles, yes. And the candles, there are sometimes four, sometimes five candles on the advent wreath and you'll notice that they're different colors these are four are blue well let's start with this one there's this big white one in the middle what do you think that might symbolize go for it god and in fact jesus this is called the christ candle and we light this on guess what day Christmas, yes, so we light this on Christmas, but you'll notice that there's only one lit here right now. Now, on the next four weeks of, of three weeks of Advent, we will light the other three candles, and sometimes this one, this third one, is pink. Now, all three of these are, all of these are blue. Sometimes they're purple. Purple, blue, they're all colors of Advent. They all symbolize that we're thinking more about Christ's coming. And so each week we get a little more excited by lighting another candle. And on the third week, sometimes that's pink because we take a moment out of being prayerful and, and waiting patiently to get a, a little bit excited. And it's called the Gaudete candle, which is a fantasy word for rejoice. It means be happy. So we sometimes on the third week of Advent take a day to rejoice that Christ is almost here. So that's why sometimes you'll see this is pink. Now, you can, if you want, last year I know that we had these Advent wreaths that you could take home. There are a bunch of them in the back room of the church. So after worship today, if you want to and your family doesn't have one, you can take an Advent wreath home with you and either leave it this beautiful gold, or if you want, you can find some, some green to cover it over and light the four candles with us at church each week as we wait for Advent, as we wait for Christmas to come. All right? Yes? Mm -hmm. There are sometimes ornaments, yes, and feel free to decorate yours with ornaments if you would like. All right, so that's a little bit about the Advent wreath. Thank you for coming up, y'all. Don't forget, if you want, you can get an Advent wreath after worship today, and y'all can head back to your seats. To God's people in exile in a faraway land, the prophet Isaiah announces good news. God is coming back and bringing the exiles home. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 8. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? 
All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The word of the Lord. The second lesson, the prophet Jeremiah offers hope for a righteous branch, a just king 
who is yet to come. A reading from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 and 6. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to a nation grown weary of war and weapons, God promises a king who will establish a reign of peace. A reading from Zechariah, the ninth chapter, verses 9 and 10. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. fourth lesson. The prophet Haggai promises to God's people a temple even more glorious than the temple of old. Reading from Haggai chapter 2 verses 6 to 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once again in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, but I will shake all the nations, so the treasures of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord.
the fifth lesson. The prophet Isaiah announces the renewal both of the land and of God's people on the coming day of redemption. A reading from Isaiah 35, 1 through 6. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear, here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The word of the Lord.
The sixth lesson. John the Baptist proclaims the coming of the promised Messiah. A reading from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed, clothed with camel's hair and a girdle of skin about his loins. And he did eat locusts and wild honey and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. The word of the Lord. spirit. O Lord, our God, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Dispel the darkness that all may come to your light. Establish your peace on the earth. Join our voices to sing your praise. Comfort the sick and weary, renew their strength and power. O Lord our God, come to us, that the earth may behold your glory. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you.
and you may be seated for just a few announcements. Special thank you to our guest musicians today, and uh, especially our guest organist who filled in on this special day. Thank you very much. The opportunities for an, and announcements are listed in your bulletin. I am not going to read all of those. I could just call your attention to those um, areas of service that you might be interested. Take that sheet home with you and notice the deadlines. Also notice the um, times of special services throughout Advent and uh, Epiphany. And at this time, we have a uh, special announce announcement from Sharon Iverson. Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank Wesley and Martin as well for being here today on such a special day. And I want to thank, even though they're not here, Bing and Aaron for planning our wonderful service today. Now is the time for planning a wonderful Advent and Christmas season. Our traditions for Advent and Christmas are longstanding, and we look forward to our Christmas Eve candlelight service. A huge part of this night is music. The worship team has decided that our choirs will sing again. Both the chancel and the ensemble will sing together on Christmas Eve at the 10 p.m. service. To prepare, we will rehearse at 9.15 a.m. on Sundays, December 5th, 12th, and 19th. Everyone who wants to sing Please join us to sing for the glory of God. Thank you. Let us continue to praise God through our offerings.
Together, let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way within us as we meet you in this meal. Through Jesus Christ, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of a Redeemer. You spoke through the prophets. You sang in a stable. You came among us in Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the bread. He gave thanks and blessed it and gave it to all to eat. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this cup, we remember your word dwelling among us. We remember our own new birth in this death and resurrection. And we look with hope for his coming again. Come now, we pray, to those gathered here through your spirit in this meal. Unite the wills of all who share this holy food, the body and blood of Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, may be seated. Just a few instructions. You'll come forward down the center aisle today to receive your communion packet. Um, please remain about three feet between each other. You will hear Jesus' promises, the body and blood of Christ for you. Take that back along the side aisles and take communion in your seats. Uh, we have acolytes that will retrieve your empty communion kits. If you're unable to come forward, we're happy to bring you communion to your seats. Just give us a wave or make sure that an usher knows and we'll bring them to you. Now come to the feast. All is prepared.
Please stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Together, let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this day. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all. Through Jesus Christ, our host and guest. Amen. receive God's blessing. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.